All right, we should be live again. We're sorry for the trouble. We had some sound issues. Uh, let's see if uh, you guys can hear us. If you can, please comment. All right. Hi, Ayub, how are you doing? Let me know if you can hear me. Oh, if you can hear me. Yeah. Awesome, yes, great, Ricardo, thanks. And soon we will be joined again by Pawin. Uh, hello? Hello. Okay, I'm hearing you. Awesome. So I hear you, I can see you, and uh, I've seen that people also hear, and we can also hear both of us and see both of us. So that's great. Uh, guys, I see you too. Sorry? Yeah, I'm seeing you too. Great. Okay, awesome. So now that everything is fine again, uh, we can start and... Um, Again, I'll shortly introduce you, Pawin. Um, Pawin is joining us from Thailand. He has a very big following on Facebook and other social media. And he's... Okay, nice. Hello, yes. And um, he's uh, been uh, doing dropshipping e-commerce business, but as well as other stuff online. And we'll talk about online opportunities, both in the e-commerce world and in other places. So just before you uh, start and uh, let us know a little bit about yourself, I just want to say that uh, before we talked a little bit about eBay and why dropshipping is, uh, you know, eBay loved dropshippers, but now it seems like they start to make them angry. Yeah. They start to, you know, <laughs> yeah. really like and put the policies that say we don't like dropshipping. And you said that yeah. this is because... Uh, they want quality dropshipping, right? They don't want people copying from others. They don't want people to uh, provide bad service and uh, never uh, items never received cancellations and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. I think it's, it's quite normal when uh, there are some method that can make money too easy. So a lot of the payers coming in. And right. when a lot of payers coming in, it's, it's more likely a chaos. So mm -hmm. the market owner have to make up some rules to control the, the too many players. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what we have now. In mm -hmm. about, I think, five to uh, every three or five years, maybe it's time that the circle that eBay is might be doing some cleanup. And mm -hmm. I think that is the time. Yes. Yeah. I, th I think one uh, thing that was very evident is that people just use the same photo and the same description and sometimes even the same monitor. So what happens is you have the same template in the description that it's copy paste from Amazon and put in the same template. You have the image, which is a white background. And then the image that's regular Amazon, you know, you can like that, see that it's from Amazon. And also you have yeah. the... Uh, title, uh, the three dots in the end, you know, the three dots, because the title is too long, uh -huh. then uh, the monitor puts three uh, points in the end. So that's kind of the yeah. same all over and over and over. And eBay saw yeah. that and they saw, hey, we don't want our buyers to have this experience that when you search something, you have like uh, 20 same results from different sellers. So uh, maybe yeah, that's, that's pretty right. right. Yeah, that's right. Um, of course, it's a part of the buyer experience, right? Yeah. And if, even for me, when I'm I, and buying from eBay uh, or like AliExpress, I feel a little bit confused when the same item have so many listings. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, sometimes we, we can sort in the item, sorting the result, third results. But yeah, you are right. So that's why that's, uh, lately you will see that a lot of softwares, they're coming out with the... Uh, uh, the, the separate the template that the players, uh, I mean the dropshipper, they can do the different different photos, mm -hmm. right? Like some, some softwares, they just can automatically 
make a new photos from the old one, mm. right? Or make the separate uh, individual template or mm. individual titles. They can do that, but um, that's just a part of it. What you mm-hmm. say that absolutely right is a buyer experience. Mm-hmm. As is, I think I think that's one of the very main factors. That because, uh, as you know, that uh, as we mentioned before, that when things is get too easy, we got to say that at the last few years, drop shipping is just. Uh, I think it's quite easy for any anybody to come in. Even you have no experience in the online world or e-commerce or eBay, you can just come in. Um, maybe you just, you know, just copy paste mm-hmm. manually. You can do manually or with the software or not. You can do drop shipping, mm-hmm. right? And some somebody just do it, not not really in a good way, because mm-hmm. too easy. Maybe they not have the bad ed- intention to do it in a bad way, but they just know because they ne- ne- somebody never do the business before. Somebody never do be eBay before, so they just doesn't know. Oh, is this wrong? Mm. You know, like uh, in my country, uh, you know, they have a lot of the fake stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, like the the shirt with all the Avengers or uh, or all the celebrities or uh, foot football teams, mm-hmm. uh, soccer teams. Um, those kind of thing is selling everywhere in Thailand. If you ever come here, right, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. and you can. You can buy it with uh, ten bucks. Yeah, or maybe MBK five bucks. in Thailand. You know MBK I, yeah. Mall. Yeah. <laughs> so there is a floor there that has all this stuff, uh, uh, not very original, like uh, stuff like you said that you can buy for ten dollars uh, and uh, you know with all these uh, Avengers right. or whatever other copyrighted material. You know, if but if for local, we can buy in five US dollars. Five bucks is fine. <laughs> cool. Yeah, that's 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 really cheap, and and that's a problems because we grown up with that. All right, mm-hmm. a lot of people they doesn't know that this is wrong. Mm-hmm. They doesn't know about the license trademark. They doesn't know. Mm-hmm. Right. So from time to times, uh, in in our current country, there are a lot of the Thai, Thai dropshipper. That mm-hmm. got banned, like the dozen of them or the hundred of them that got banned from eBay because they're selling the fake stuff, mm-hmm. and they just doesn't know. They're selling mm-hmm. the the Vero item, mm-hmm. and they just doesn't know that oh, is this somebody on it? That you cannot like that. do that. Yeah, it's interesting. You know, also even if people sell original stuff, like really original stuff that they take from Amazon, they get taken down because of Vero. You know, verified rights owners that people yeah. you know. Uh, and say, oh, this is my competitor. Maybe he doesn't have a permit from the manufacturer to put this item. And so then you yeah, just yeah. get your item deleted and this is an uh, original item. Also, you know, they can tell this is counterfeit, even though that it's not like you said, you take uh, a $10 shirt from uh, Thailand and ship and sell it like it's original. Even if you sell yeah, an yeah. original stuff, they will say, oh, maybe it's not original. So that's kind of one yes. of the risks of people who start to sell right away with branded items and with items with trademark or like popular movies. So I think that became a very big problem. And then that's also why eBay started yes. with this stuff. Yeah. And as we all know, the lately the, the eBay Vero is so extremely sensitive. Yeah. You sell a little bit, a bit of the Vero's, even it's not, the thing is, uh, if they announce in a Vero page, it's fine. But the thing is, they're not announced there, mm-hmm. and it's just a hidden wheel that we doesn't know. So yeah. sometimes, time to times, we all get reported. We got the remove listing, and we got three days restriction, <laughs> seven day restriction. Yeah. When we got when we got thirty days, we you know. Oh, I feel like I have to stop it somehow. So mm-hmm. this is this is a, 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 a ugly truth, like a bad joke for all the dropshipper. Yeah. Um, so far, what, what I can do with the Vero thing is um, the software can help. They collect the database from all the, the user, mm-hmm. right? Uh, all you have to do it in the super manually way. Mm-hmm. You just leave from, go back to the, to the traditional way of the drop shippings. You just select, the, select only the maybe for the details. Mm-hmm. Right uh, to find only the U.S. retailer or, or, or wholesale is fine. Yeah, mm-hmm. maybe go to original might be safe for you. Mm-hmm. Right, but so but not using I'm, uh, Amazon, not using like a retail sites like Amazon or like Walmart. Uh, 
going to yeah. the direct. Yeah. So, I see. Mm. Yeah, probably. And I think drop shipping in that way. I think eBay is still alright with that. Mm -hmm. I yeah. see. So it seems like everything is. Um, I think outside of eBay, uh, it seems like most people, most platforms, they just want to direct to the something more sustainable, sustainabilities. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. And we have to say that drop shipping. One thing we ha we need to admit is, it's not the a long run business. Mm. It's good for the for the, someone who's starting on on you know if you doesn't have the money, you might you you might not have the money to start any business or invest the first initial fund. So you might need to start something. Okay, then drop shipping might be your answer. It's really low risk. You doesn't have to buy anything, no mm -hmm. stuff, and you can do it. Uh, so, sorry. No, no, it's okay. So that's interesting because what I want to talk next is about the actual the opportunities there are for people that, okay, done dropshipping, what's next? What they can do maybe in e-commerce and maybe even more than that, like uh, in social, in online or other stuff. So what would you say per people who already did that and want to have the next step now? Okay, uh, let's say, um, okay, let's say about in what I'm doing, just for my own experience in my country. Mm -hmm. uh, what I see is online, if we're doing online, uh, mm -hmm. online is something that is a trend that I think is ending already. Mm -hmm. okay? But what we need to do is maybe we have to do both, mix online and offline. We, maybe we need to do something like the omni channels. It's, it's about time that um, there's no traditions, there's no new, it's no old, but it's only have the something for now, right? Mm -hmm. I see that a lot of people, they're trying to do only the, you know, maybe we see, we, let's see the, the big guy, like Amazon, they buy the whole food, right? Mm -hmm. And Ali in China, they just buy the supermarket, I can't remember the name. Mm -hmm. why, why the giant of the online world, they have to go down for the offline world, mm -hmm. for the physical stores. And that thing, I think, is, is a kind of the side that actually, since the last few years, um, the online alone, you're not going to make it. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can make, you, you can make money, mm -hmm. all right? But there's a limitation of it. Yeah, but also the offline alone, you're not mm -hmm. going to make it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so if you bought, then you are just like the unicorn with a skyrocket, <laughs> right? Okay. That's that's. That's something that I see, and, and I see a lot of people doing it, and they're, they're looking great. They're looking mm -hmm. great. Um, if you take a look at the numbers, uh, we, might, we might see that uh, the retails, the physical stores, a lot have closings, mm -hmm. a lot have died and, and, and passed away. Mm -hmm. and, but, but we also see that uh, the retails, numbers, mm -hmm. we, we cannot skip that. Mm -hmm. We might see e-commerce, the online, the e-commerce, everything is going so fast like the locket. But mm -hmm. the retail, the size is still so huge, mm -hmm. right? But the thing is, before, the individual like, like us, the normal people like us, it's quite difficult if we need to go to retail or we need to, let's say we just want to open some retails, maybe mm -hmm. just one, one shop, one mm -hmm. store, small one, mm -hmm. right? You need to invest I don't know, maybe in my country, like, uh, let's say uh, 30 grand, mm -hmm. 50, grand, 50 grand to mm -hmm. open just one store. Mm -hmm. And I think only 10% of the population can afford that. Mm -hmm. Right? But how about the, the rest of the people? The rest of the people who doesn't have the money to start. Yeah, you can start online first. You can start mm -hmm. from the online alone. It's okay. I doesn't say that from the day one, Mm -hmm. We all have to do, wow, mixing everything. It's okay. There's no need to go that hard. Uh, from the day one, maybe you can start from the online because mm -hmm. it's really good for the, for the starting to have some investment to earn your few money. And mm -hmm. yeah, dropship might be the answer. Okay. But don't think you're going to make money from dropshipping like for another 10 years. I okay. See. Uh, even you can make for another 10 years, but I'm sure on the year three or year four, you might have some money and you want to develop into something else, right? Mm. Dropshipping might be only your uh, your pocket money mm. or just your, your sign money, okay? Mm. But anyway, I think dropshipping is great, but uh, it's for the starters. Mm -hmm. But after that, if we talk about the opportunities, I think uh, if you have 
the money to invest. You can have the money to do the marketing, to do the branding. I think branding is one of the best thing we can do for now. A private label. And yes, do the private labels and do your own brands, and maybe you can start more uh, in your country or maybe your neighbor country. Uh, in your city, it's fine. Even mm -hmm. we don't talking about the, uh, the the nation. I'm just talking about the the, the city. It's fine, mm -hmm. right? You're just selling something like a hundred of them, a hundred unit a month, a thousand unit a month. And concept that great, mm -hmm. right? That's maybe six months a year, and then you develop it. Spend like I think private level maybe require you like a few years. Not like a drop shipping. You can starting in make money in one year, six months or one or twelve months. But uh, private levels you might be need. A year or two mm -hmm. to at least make your life stable but after that maybe three years five years if you really focus on the private levels mm -hmm. i think that's that's is what gonna help you a lot mm -hmm. yeah but i'm not talking about uh you just put your own label your own tag on the chinese stuff mm -hmm. um, that that not a that just temporarily mm. right but you might be really need to do your, your own items, your own products. If you want to uh, selling, let's say, a backpack. Mm -hmm. A lot of people love backpack. And it's ordinary, ordinary stuff. And you just go to China, you do the same backpack. You change the color and put your own brand. Mm -hmm. Okay, that, that maybe just uh, everything is on Amazon, right? Mm -hmm. You will see that actually the same backpack on Amazon is like a hundred of them. Just change the mm -hmm. color, change the methods, yeah, but you see the same name. backpack. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, that may be good for your, um, maybe for your experience. Mm -hmm. You're starting to do one or two products uh, for your experience at the private levels. But after that, maybe after you learn, uh, I think you do your, your really uh, develop own product mm -hmm. for your own bit level that mm -hmm. might be the real opportunities i see that's interesting maybe do you have any examples that you can show maybe uh, i don't know online or uh, something that um, you know kind of a private label or a brand that was started not by a big corporation but of a small you know small business entrepreneur like ourselves like uh, online entrepreneurs <laughs> okay uh, let's say about how about you're talking about the products, right? Mm -hmm. The XML products. Mm -hmm. um, I would say, uh, okay, let's say in Thailand, mm -hmm. in my country, uh, we have only few products that's so popular. Mm -hmm. You know, very, very popular. Like anybody can have this kind of products. You know what is it? Mm. Uh, it's a uh, uh, beauty products. Mm. It started like I think from about ten years ago. Okay, mm -hmm. um, I think because maybe Asian is they have a lot of the raw materials. Or here we can import the raw material from Korean, from Japan. It's pretty good. It's pretty good ingredients, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of the other factories mm -hmm. to produce this. You know uh, how to call it uh, the cream, mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, the body lotion cream for your face, whatever for your body, right. for uh, beauty care. Right, mm -hmm. so. Uh, I would I would say that because um, somebody started every business we have somebody started maybe you are the first one that that is great but if you not you see that what is your strength that you can produce maybe in your country or maybe your neighbor country somewhere close that you can really control mm -hmm. right and you, you really have can develop something that is stronger than your competitors mm -hmm. okay I would say that if uh, let's say uh, I'm in Thailand. Um, if I want to make a car mm -hmm. to compete with Tesla, uh, I, I would I would like to develop the software to mm -hmm. compete with the people from Israel. I don't think I can, mm. All right? Because the ecosystem, mm -hmm. the uh, the people, uh, the tradition, the atmosphere, the support from the government. There's so many things that difference, mm -hmm. right? So. Uh, but for the beauty cream, okay, mm -hmm. I would say my country can compete with others. Okay, mm -hmm. they're, they're, they're pretty good with that. Okay, and so I think the first thing is you figure out first that what you can produce mm -hmm. somewhere around you, mm -hmm. right? Maybe 
city, maybe your country, maybe your uh, continent or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. And you can start by the and research the market and follow the the, the group in mm -hmm. doing the plan levels. Yeah. See, you know, I want to maybe show an example of uh, something you talked about. You talked about, uh, for example, um, body lotion or a body cream, and we want to find what other competitors are doing and uh, where are the things that we can improve upon. So let's try, let's say, body cream. Yeah. Okay, so uh, if you guys see my screen, I don't know if you, you can uh, go in, let's see. Um, let me share screen. All right. Okay, so uh, what I will do is I'll search for body cream here on Amazon. Uh, let me even uh, put the location to be United States so we see more results. And let's say we take uh, some of the leading ones. These are, these are sponsored, um, but they're also with the regular results. Let's say this, this one. Now, what we see, you see there's this um, 4.3 stars out of 5. And a thing that we can do is go down and look at the reviews and see what the bad, the worst reviews, what they're telling. So um, I'll give you an example. It's a little bit slow here, but we'll manage it through. I'll click here on the one star reviews. Do you guys see? Oh, and do you see the screen? Okay. And here you can see exactly what are the negatives here. These are your opportunities to find what you can produce that will be better than this product in this area. So it solves the problems that the people here have. So for example, yeah. beware if you have allergies, okay? Mm. Or um, um, the cream has unpleasant smell. Smell is definitely something that you can find a supplier to have a good smell, right? Yeah, but it's very sensitive. Sorry? It's very sensitive case because I think different people from different areas, they might prefer a different smell. Mm. Yeah, sometimes it's good for me, but the others mm -hmm. might hate it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. But you really can find some patterns here. For example, horrible breakout <laughs> after three days of use or, um, uh, or pimples or won't buy again. But you know, that doesn't mean this product is bad. This product is actually very good. But you yeah. can see what it's lacking. And then you can go back and see other products and see if there's some things in common. So, for example, here it's the pimples. It's maybe the smell. I don't know. Maybe for some people it's good. Some people it's bad. So, basically, yeah. you go this and see the other results also. See if you can find a big... Uh, disadvantage a big point that maybe you can now go to a supplier and try to create a product that solves that problem yeah so uh, yeah that was on the thought that uh, you said creating your item um, by the way how do you find suppliers you said maybe suppliers from japan suppliers from other places oh. Um, this is a very important part. Like, mm -hmm. um, like before, I, I mentioned that everybody in Thailand have their own. Anybody who want, they can have their own private level, right? Mm. And just pretty too, because there are a lot, a lot of the factories, manufacturers that can help you product, uh, produce it. And mm -hmm. you know, even even the the uh, the old lady who have like three hundred uh, three hundred bucks. They can mm -hmm. start their own private label. They can mm -hmm. produce their first rod of the cleans and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the medium qualities. Uh, because this is the reason that uh, when you find something that your area have a very strong uh, about, it means that you will have a lot of the supplies. There mm -hmm. are a lot of the ecosystem that support you. Uh, everything you do is will be a lot easier. But, of course, 
a lot of competitors as well. Mm -hmm. So you might need to find the market that people in your country they're not going to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Sorry. this is a. I think. Yeah, uh, personally, I think this is quite uh, important because, uh, like in Thailand, um, most people they just make the cream, make the beauty products, and they sell locally. And really few of them totally rare that they they export outside or sell the cross border. Really rare. And who can do that? They, it's, it's like it's pretty blue oceans around here, mm. right? Yeah, that's the things. And one thing that I would say that um, I I found is really really sexy and hot right now is is a market around uh, Thailand. It's a CLMV. It's like Laos, Vietnam, Burma. It's a new country. They just open up. Uh, they just starting doing the socials, and you can do market marketings. You know, if anybody saying that Facebook is so expensive nowadays, you try this country. You will find it. it it's the price like five years ago in Facebook. Hmm. Interesting. So, how do you do um, uh, social marketing and social maybe media in the uh, you know? And I'm back. I'm back. Yeah. So we're talking about uh, messaging now. Yeah. So uh, you know, Line in your country also use Line or WhatsApp. We only use WhatsApp, but the Line I know that it's uh, popular in Thailand. I guess right. Yeah, it, it's just like a really cute uh, chat with a uh, sticker base. Mm -hmm. yeah, so instead of talking something, you just send a sticker all the time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, um, it, it's very good. You just mark it. Um, in, in here, number one is Facebook and Line. Mm -hmm. Okay. After we do the Googles and YouTube, same like the others. Mm -hmm. So how do you yeah. advertise there? What, what, do, what do you do? I'm, I'm curious. Ah, uh, for now, actually, to just paint the ad on Facebook is pretty crazy. Mm -hmm. um, especially last month, uh, last two weeks, I think they're changing they, some internal stuff again. The price mm -hmm. increased again. And mm -hmm. it seems like all the Facebook marketers just get used to it. Huh? Mm -hmm. It's just increasing every three or four months. Um, anyway, so what we do, uh, we do, we do a bit of the funnels. Uh, the most popular funnel that uh, people here are doing is uh, we just use the Facebook just for the awareness ad. Mm -hmm. You just try to find uh, to find your lead, and mm -hmm. we collect in the in the group of the line mm -hmm. or the messenger. And in the messenger, we use a mini chat. We use the chatbot just to the broadcast, make relationship, and make the conversions. And same like in line, send the promotion, send the content to them. Mm -hmm. Make them give them some values and convert the sale. But if for the, the beauty, if for the beauty creams, um, mostly they just send the promotions. Mm -hmm. I see. Uh, people here, because, because the beauty, beauty market in here is quite packed, a lot of the items, and people already get used to it. So sometimes price uh, also, because in here, um, Quality is important, but it's number two. Number one, mm -hmm. uh, I say most for the mass item, mm -hmm. they say price number one. So mm -hmm. if you come in Thailand, you will see there are sale everywhere and sale all the times, even mm -hmm. in the in the mall, like mm -hmm. sale like I think five months a year. So it, price number one. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here just use the promotion to make a conversion. Mm -hmm. Because you know, like in Amazon, it's uh, the opposite. In Amazon, uh, quality is the most important thing. People there are willing to spend more money for a good product. And then there's an opportunity for you to put a product that you maybe find for cheap in uh, Thailand, let's say some type of cream. And then if it's good enough and if you make your product research and you de develop your product correctly, then you can sell it for a better price. In, uh, in Amazon for like five times more than, than you would sell it on Thailand, I guess. So, uh, uh, I think so. So, yeah. 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 And that's what Sorry, go ahead. Uh, yeah. Um, that is a good part of Amazon that I really love about. 
one thing is the ticket in Amazon is a lot higher than we sell in locally in Thailand. And to make the, the quality products or the premium brands in, in here is a bit difficult because, uh, you know, the, the payment base in Thailand, the ticket base in Thailand is different in the U.S. people or the global. So, yeah, I quite love that part of Amazon. You, mm -hmm. can, you can focus on your quality and make the then sell it higher price. Mm -hmm. Can you show us maybe a specific product uh, on Facebook that is uh, uh, using social media to you know to find people to find audience, and that uh, the people sell it uh, in other platforms as well, like maybe a page or stuff like that. Uh, you mean just the normal brandings or the normal products that they sell everywhere? Uh, yeah, maybe maybe something like a product that they're selling everywhere that is uh, kind of a private label that created this online uh, page or online presence. If you can remember. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, maybe not exactly the items, but mm -hmm. let's say just categories. Mm -hmm. Categories. I think the first one is the fashions. Fashion is 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 well mm -hmm. and it's quite easy. A lot, I think it's a lot easier than, than the beauty creams because there are no allergies, mm -hmm. right? And you say, of course, people wearing it, if it's not fit, it's just not fit, but they don't kill you because they have the people coming out. Mm -hmm. um, it's, I think the fashion and accessories is good for the starting. And you can sell uh, worldwide because you can ship anywhere. And you can start by uh, do your own branding, selling, uh, the price not high. So you can do the social marketing, right? You can do Facebook ads, still is fine. And mm. I think the fashion is great for the Instagram. Mm. Instagram is great for the fashion items and just make the nice photos, uh, add up a price even higher, okay? Mm. And you can do personal branding in Instagram. So uh, after, yeah. So you, you mean like people, for, you, you take uh, the suppliers from Israel directly or from Thailand directly and with them do a product or do you mean like product that you uh, source from other countries like, I don't know, China or Thailand? Um, actually, the accessory and fashion, I still like the item from China because the price is crazy. Mm -hmm. uh, you can sell like it's maybe 10 times thousand percent higher than, than the cost mm -hmm. you know you can buy like uh, the bracelet earrings the the necklet maybe i think one box mm -hmm. maybe if you ship a lot of them like a hundred of them the same time is is totally even cheaper and mm -hmm. can you imagine that if you make your private label or you sell on amazon it's maybe three bucks five bucks already or if you make the beautiful ones might be 10 us 10 bucks it is a lot of profit it's rather profit, but mm -hmm. you need to, the fashion is, you really need to have the good eyes. Mm -hmm. Not everything can, yeah. But uh, do you sell, what, what do you think? Would it be better to sell it on Amazon or on eBay when you're doing something like that? Okay. Um, I would say that it quite depends on what kind of items. If you say, um, if you are the collect, collective items, uh, limited items, Handcraft items, that for sure. Generally, those kind of things for sure is eBay is great. And you can, you can even bidding on them, right? Um, but if you're doing something like the, the if China, the item, even the accessory, you, it, everything is mostly a mass item. So that might be good for Amazon. And one thing for Amazon is you might need to sell something that's easier to scale up. Like it should be the man manufacture item. It should not be like the handcraft items because mm -hmm. when Amazon give you the the traffic is, you know, maybe you sell ten a day, maybe increase to hundred a day is is in, in just a week. So that that's supposed to be something that if you don't have something to sell, uh, is is it's too bad, right? Mm -hmm. So. I think it's better be the manufacturer item for Amazon. Different, different for the market. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you basically find a supplier that can give you several, like not just one or two or make it handmade and then you sell like five items and then you have to wait a month until they create uh, something new. 
you go to a supplier that already has items that they create in like maybe in thousands or in tens of thousands, uh, you find them either in your own country or you go to, you know, you contact someone from China if it's items that are reasonable to find in China, you find items that are easy to produce and scale up and then you create your own brand, uh, whether it's on uh, Amazon using FBA or if it's uh, on eBay and uh, you, you go from there. And, you know, it's interesting. I think in Amazon, there's a much better um, kind of um, infrastructure for building a brand. Because if you have a brand, you have people leave reviews for your item, not just for your store, right? And then your item yeah. becomes more popular and people see the product. Like if we do, for example, a comparison, I'll do a share screen on my end. Like let's... Okay. Let's see. We see here body cream, and we see here some uh, some brands. I think some of them are big, some of them are small. Let's see if we what we see on eBay when we search the same thing, uh, body cream. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, I don't think on the first page on Amazon you can even find something that's generic and non-branded. It's everything brands like CeraVe, Bloom, uh, Vaseline, uh, Bioderma, uh, Neutrogena, also a uh, famous one. So if we yeah. search the same thing on eBay, let's see what we got here. <laughs> so do you see it's a very, very different thing. You can see here. <laughs> yeah, uh, an item uh, for $1.65 from Hong Kong, you don't have yeah. anything that says any brand, okay? Yeah. So it's like, yeah. uh, almost like AliExpress, I think, because in AliExpress, you cannot uh, put uh, copyrighted or trademarked stuff uh, that's not yours. Um, past gel, beauty face, you see? Yeah. So this is kind of, I think, tells you the difference of uh, what strategy you should use when you create your own brand. Because here you won't be able to really stand out with your item if it's like $20 instead of $1.65. Because here the price is very, very important. The items yeah. that are priced uh, cheapest are the first ones. And let's see, it's interesting how much he sold. Sold, wow, well, more than a thousand like that. He wouldn't sell this successfully, you know, if, if it was in Amazon, because here... Yeah. I think there's a lot out there. One or two dollar item in eBay. Um, mm -hmm. I guess, because, um, you know, the China, they have a really cheap uh, uh, shipping, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the support from the company. Uh, yeah. Sometimes I envy. Yeah. So that's why they can sell like one or two dollars. But... A uh, thousand of items sounds so amazing, huh? Maybe just maybe they sell those items uh, not really for profit, but just to bump up their feedback or bump up their transactions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I think so too. I don't think uh, they do it for profit because yeah. uh, just uh, you know sending and just uh, picking and packing this item will probably cost them like more than a dollar. Yeah. Uh, I yeah. used to sell but, also yeah. like that for uh, uh, cables for a uh, iPhone. I sold like for 99 cents, even less. We, there was a trick to make items for 97 uh, cents. So I would sell like thousands of those and it didn't make me profit. It just made me more uh, 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 feedback for exactly. my store. Yeah, uh, I should buy from you that time. Huh? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think so. But it's already closed. So uh, I'm, I'm not selling them anymore because it wasn't... Uh, very profitable um yeah so i would say i agree if you have your own brand i think the infrastructure in amazon is probably uh more suitable for your own brands but if i have if i have uh, my own brands my own uh, items i would sell everywhere because mm -hmm. the good good thing of the marketplace if uh, one item is very really cheap to keep it live, uh, keep active on the market, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Just let's see. Oh, you know what? I want uh, people, if you guys have any questions, uh, let us know. So Poen can answer. 
And uh, yeah, meanwhile, sure. let me just get myself back on the screen. Okay, stop sharing. Awesome. Okay. So, yeah, just, uh, yeah, we're, so we're still live. We're waiting for some questions. Um, but when do we have a couple more minutes or do we have to, uh, or do we have to? Ah, no, it's fine. Okay. Yeah, and just talk it's fine. Yeah. So uh, I'm curious to know what do you do uh, nowadays? Like what's the, the focus of your business today? Uh, actually, my focus of business is uh, we doing the agency for the B2B business. So we offering to do the uh, selling like uh, the marketplace mm -hmm. okay, the e-commerce thing and to do the digital marketings and production for the contents like mm -hmm. graphic and uh, video contents. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, I would say that my my first interest now is on the B2B. And we're working on to the direction on focus on the corporate level. Mm. Yeah. What's we we gonna say we, we just totally newbie for the corporate level. So hopefully in one or two years we're gonna be a pro. Mm. <laughs> uh, first yeah. of all, I'm sure uh, that uh, you will be uh, big and successful with that. But I'm curious what so what exactly do you do like uh, advertisements or uh, promoting their Instagram pages or what what stuff? How do you mean uh, the, for the agency, right? B two B. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, we shoot the ad in Facebook, right? And we doing the Google ad, right? We create the website with the funnels with the workplace. Mm. Right, and uh, we support them by doing the. Uh, we have the copywriters, graphic designers, and the productions for the videos. Mm. We have the we we can create the full productions video for the uh, for our clients. Mm. And these yeah. are clients from uh, Thailand, or are they from all around the world? I uh, know for the local actually. I see. For now, for now, it's for the locals. Yeah, yeah. So but I think that actually you know me because uh, we we doing the course right we doing the course teaching the people for for the e-commerce. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, that's um, for now. Actually, we have like uh, four uh, four product we offers uh, mm -hmm. the full service. One thing is a course. Mm -hmm. So we teaching for all the marketplace, all the content things. Every actually everything we do, we teaching people, mm -hmm. right? And the second one is a B two B agency things. Right, and the third one we doing the business event organizer, mm -hmm. and the fourth one we doing the consult, and actually now uh, our company we doing the consulting for around uh, fifty two companies. Mm. Yeah, right. but all of them are locals, Thai companies. I see, and uh, this is uh, what you talked about that uh, we have to combine offline and online business. So I guess it has to do with going and looking for companies in your area, having uh, also having the skills to talk with them and uh, say, look, uh, here's uh, what you can do, what's your potential, what you can do online. And if you don't do online, you're basically leaving money on the table because you can reach so much more people when you're online. Yes. Right? Yes. Yeah. So I guess, um, yeah. Yeah, but... You know, you know, sometimes it's a bit painful to, to know that uh, one thing in, in for, the, for the Thai entrepreneurs, for the Thai companies, uh, if for the big one, for the corporate is fine, they, they, they're totally fine. Mm -hmm. But for the medium to the low one, they're just like, they're not actually don't know that what is really the e-commerce or what is the online business or what is the digital marketing. Actually, they don't. They, they don't have the knowledge about that because um, I hate to see it, to say that, but our country is a bit slow then uh, for the digital things, for the mm -hmm. online things. But I'm sure that in one year, because so far from our history, we are slow, but sometimes when we almost die, we learn pretty fast. <laughs> <laughs> so I think, I think now is the time that uh, we, we have to learn pretty fast. So I think about one or two years, um, I'll, you you might see a lot of people getting better. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, 
I cannot say that uh, like for the all company that I help them um, uh, I can say that all of them success mm -hmm. even after I give them the consult I don't think they will success um, mm -hmm. it's actually true I have to admit mm -hmm. right the success rate is not 100% mm -hmm. uh, some of them is um, pretty worldly some of them is good they listen and adapt is fine yeah mm -hmm. but yeah too bad to say that yeah, but uh, yeah. I think here you're touching a, a place where there's a lot of potential for people like us that we do e-commerce online. Some of us do also Facebook and advertising. So people like us who are in this group and are involved in that can find people that sell stuff locally, can find people that are uh, managing stores that sell only offline and go and offer them. Let's do a cooperation. Let's let me uh, buy stuff from you, put it on eBay, on e-commerce. Let me manage your, let's say, Facebook pages or an Instagram, and you only pay me for, let's say, new customers that come in. And they would, they don't have the time. And you can charge money for that and be be able to help them and help yourself uh, with your knowledge. Yep. Yeah. So that's yeah. And you can actually, do it. yeah. That's that's really correct. What you say is very correct. So a lot of the local that have the great items, but they just don't know how to reach the people globally. So that's how we're going to help them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I see. Mm. So just before we finish, uh, Poen, do you have anything else, anything maybe you can uh, offer or recommend or a service or a product or how people can reach you? Uh, okay. So uh, too bad that for now, uh, all my service is for uh, still selling for local. Mm -hmm. But if you are for global and you would like to reach me, you can search for my page uh, for the PSO, mm -hmm. Passive Selling Online. You can reach me there. Just text me in there and ask for me. Uh, mostly the admin will answer, but if you ask for me, I will be there. Mm -hmm. Right? And uh, uh, for, the, for the software, is that right? I promote the software here? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, for the drop shipping, um, um, to be honest, you really have to do is is very correct. And you need to do the buy experience right. And so far, uh, I use I use a Yabale. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I found that it's a monitoring software that is really reliable. So I would suggest that if you want to do the drop ship in the right way and in the in the long run make it sustain, make a good buy experience, I would suggest that. Mm -hmm. All right? Okay. Okay. Hope that not, not, not too hard sale, huh? No, no, it's okay. <laughs> it's, I think that uh, if we give people value and if we help, it's okay to promote and it's okay to recommend. I'm just looking if we have any questions if, uh, in, the, um, in the comments. Let's say, let's see. Mm. Okay. Okay, we do not. I see a lot of Thai people here. Huh? Sorry? <laughs> I see a lot of Thai people here. Ah, really? A uh, few, few Thai people, yeah. Awesome. So uh, just out of curiosity, do you do nowadays eBay dropshipping specifically, like from, uh, like you said, like from Amazon or from stuff like that? Yes, I see you doing it. I see you doing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And... Um, all store are the same from the day one that I do. Uh, I mean, before the traffic issue happens, uh, now it just I still doing the same. No store have closed. Mm, cool. So wh yeah. why is that? Is it because you do uh, manually? You uh, check that it's not a, a brand product, or what? What do you make so that uh, it won't happen? This lower impression. Uh, actually, uh, okay. my sale drop. That is one thing I have to to tell. Mm -hmm. um, is my sale is not that as good as the two year or three years ago. Uh, mm -hmm. It's dropped like half. Yeah, but uh, I did do manually. I still use a software to listing to just copy and paste. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I like very carefully. Mm. And uh, yeah. how about Amazon, Shopify, do, like stuff like that? Uh, I love I love both of them actually. Um, I would say that okay, um, the the downside of Amazon and uh, Shopify is that if you're not doing dropshipping, if you do dropshipping, it's fine. Amazon is it 
and Shopify totally great. But if you want to do is in the in the long run, and mm -hmm. you need to do the private label, the downside is uh, the private label might need some investment. Mm -hmm. At least a few hundred, a few hundred might be required from you. But if you have the money, I would say that Amazon and Shopify is quite a great opportunities. Mm -hmm. So starting yeah. with eBay dropshipping, where you don't have to invest really anything, then going to let's say creating a private label on Amazon FBA, and uh, then maybe once you're good with that, you can also create a Shopify store and maybe put some money into investing even in advertising on Facebook. Um, yeah, yeah, because advertising is a huge money. So make sure you learn the marketing before you use a Facebook. A lot of people just jump into Facebook and and take the course on the how to shoot the Facebook ad, and then mm -hmm. they just start the business. Um, actually, it's not. You need to learn about the marketing, how to do the contents, mm -hmm. uh, a graph, or uh, so many stuff. Actually, Facebook is is like a media, like a part of the the marketing things. So at least uh, I would recommend that you take. Uh, the class or the course to learn some marketing first. Just learn about how to use the marketing tools, uh, about Facebook tools. It might not be enough nowadays, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, people have to remember that uh, this is something that will cost money. However, you started it, if you're starting to do advertising on Facebook, you have to at least have a couple of hundreds of dollars just for Facebook to learn what kind of stuff works, what kind of stuff doesn't work for you and for your audience to buy your products, to buy your services. So, uh, yeah, I yes. think uh, that's kind of the next step after you start to make money in the other ways. Yeah, or maybe you can sell your skill in Upwork or anywhere. If you doesn't want, if you don't like the drop shipping, maybe you doesn't want to to drop ship. You just, but you just need money to invest. Maybe you're good at something. You can sell your skill at Upwork. I, I never tried that. I never tried that, but uh, I heard it's still all right. So maybe it will check it out. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's a great idea. Also, Fiverr, you know, you can do some simple stuff for people for $5 yeah. or even more. They now charge like $100 for stuff. So yeah. you can be the one that uh, does it. You know, it's interesting. Now we don't have much time, but maybe I will do a video regarding how you can make money as offering services yourself. Like, on Fiverr, on uh, on uh, Upwork, on other platforms, so that uh, you know, then you have money to invest in. Uh, hey, that's great. Stuff. That's going to help a lot of people. Yeah, you should do that. You should yeah. do that video. It's very good yeah. idea. Thank you for the idea. I appreciate that. Okay, yeah, so no when, I want right. to thank you very much. Thank you for your time being here. I appreciate that. Uh, you explained about yourself, about what you did, the opportunities we had. I had a few ideas like <laughs> popping up in my brain uh, after our call. And um, again, uh, if you guys want to reach Pawen, you can also contact him through Passive Selling Online. That's right, your group? Yes. Yeah. Uh, the, yeah. 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 Uh, the Facebook page. Yeah. Oh, the Facebook page, exactly. So, uh, yeah. That being said, thank you very much, and uh, we'll see you in the yeah. next video, guys. Thank you for it. All right. So, yeah, thank you, Igo, and thank you, everyone. I hope uh, this will be useful and have the value for you all. And, yeah, so let's get up. I hope they have the next opportunity to talk to you again. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Igo. For sure. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye. Right. Okay, let's stop the live. Um,